All right, so people ask me questions about whether it's easier to get a job in Canada or Australia, and uh, uh, I got several questions about it, whether it's easy to get a you know, computer science-related job in Australia or Canada, and one of them asked and told me, like, you know, they heard that less, it's getting harder to get uh, computer science-related jobs in Canada. And I would say this, as long as you have experience, there are tons and tons of jobs posted on job site. So what's the hardest? It's the beginning. Right after you know, graduating from university, when you have less experience, then it's hard. When you are at the junior level, then it's hard because not many companies want to hire those people. It's kind of like you, know, you need to build and gain experience at the small companies first. Um, and so, so that's that. It's same in United States, you know. But in terms of you know, let's talk about math numbers. I looked up uh, Glassdoor jobs. I looked up how many jobs are. I looked up how many software related jobs are on Glassdoor. Glassdoor is a website where you can look up salary, uh, jobs, and reviews of companies. And if you go to uh, you know, I looked up software. On Glassdoor in Seattle, and uh, there were at least like 10,000 hits for that keyword software. When I did the same thing in Vancouver, Canada, I had 2,500 hits for software related jobs. So, Seattle, United States, Seattle is one of the biggest tech hubs in, in the world, entire world. So, I can totally understand they have 10,000 you know, jobs, right? And Vancouver has 2,500, which is pretty big too. Vancouver. And then when I looked up jobs, software related jobs in Sydney, Australia, Sydney is the biggest tech hub in Australia, bigger than Melbourne. It only had 14 or 1200 jobs, software related jobs. What that means is that Sydney has less than half of jobs, software related jobs, there are in Vancouver. So you can think of uh, job market size of Sydney is half the size of Vancouver. Vancouver is this size, Sydney is half the size. So imagine, you know, if you want to get a job, it's going to be much higher to find a job in Vancouver than Australia. That's why it's really important, and I keep saying this, it's important to decide where you study. Because if you don't study in an area, where there are lots of jobs in job market, it'll be harder for you to get first job, junior job. And especially if true for junior. If you have at least like two or three years of experience, you are gonna be at the intermediate level, then it doesn't really affect that much if you're looking for a job in Sydney. But if you're getting a job at junior, you need to have, you need to find a decent sized company to teach you, uh, to educate you, to train you. So that's that. Uh, when I looked up uh, job size, software industry, tech industry size in Berlin, Germany, I think it had uh, 1,400 or 2,000, I think it had 2,500, 2, so same size as Vancouver, so, which was pretty big, right? So Canada, you know, I think Toronto, University of Water, Toronto, Waterloo, and Vancouver are the biggest, biggest tech job market in the world except United States. So that's why I say going to university in SFE or UBC or University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, uh, always going to be you know, your best you know, possible option after going to the United States. Because job market there here is pretty big and the big tech companies branches like Microsoft offices, Microsoft offices in Vancouver, Amazon offices here. Amazon Office has like 10,000 people here, no, 1,000 people. Microsoft Office has probably a few hundred people here. And then Google is coming here as well, Facebook too. Seattle is nearby. So, big tech companies in Canada, SAP, you know, that's pretty big too. Microsoft and Amazon has branches here. So yeah, uh, it's gonna be way easier, you know, at least it's easier to find a job in Canada than in you know in Japan. Unless you wanna get paid like one third 
of what are you gonna get paid in Canada. In Japan, starting salary for like you know programmer is like I think thirty thousand uh, thirty thousand dollars a year, right? Thirty five hundred thirty thousand or thirty five thousand a year. Whereas in Canada, the starting salary is like at least fifty thousand. In the United States, at least like seventy eighty thousand. So think about it. So, you know, either way, you need to really you know push yourself. Uh, build your own survival skills because nobody's gonna help you except you. You need to be resourceful in terms of you know getting help from the university about you know career services like how to build your resume, how to practice interview, how to you know practice technical coding interview. I use my university's resources. I was resourceful in that I was seeking help from corporate advisors, career advisors to practice to get you know. To, to get uh, proofreading on my resume, cover letter. I use those you know, help services free to, to, to get experience and to get, you know, to, to get to here. So you need to be resourceful. Just because you went to you know, university ABC doesn't mean you can get a job automatically. You need to you know, be active, proactive. That's everywhere you go in North America, you know, this applies. You know, it's not like Japan where you know, every in a school or a company is going to train you from the scratch. You know, it's here, it's kind of more like a minor league where people, you know, get experience by themselves and uh, companies are looking for those proactive people, proactive and initiative taking, people who are taking initiatives. Those people are the ones that who get valued in North America. That's why we get paid more, twice, three times more than in Japan. So that's that. Um, don't worry too much about, uh, don't worry too much about, you know, uh, whether you can get a job in Canada, as long as you go to you know universities, you know top ones in computer science like UBC, SFU, uh, then and then you strive. You need to work hard to get a co first co-op job. You need to work really hard to get a job, in turn. But once you get first one, second one is gonna be easier. Once you get second one, third one is gonna be much much easier. Once you get three co-ops. It's much, 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 much easier to get a job after you graduate. That's how it works in North America. You build experience on top of previous ones. That's how you proceed and then step up your own career. So first one would be small company. I work, you know, many people work at the not really small companies. It doesn't really matter where you start. Because what, what people value, what companies are looking for in the next job interview, is your work experience, not necessarily your the name of the company you worked at. Alright? So that's that. People don't care as much about the name of the companies you work here in North America. Same. People don't care much about the name of the university that you go to as much as in Japan. You know what it matters more is what you measured, what you kind of experience you had on your resume than just naming the university with no relevant work experience or no employable major. You know, worst case is like go to Harvard, study the history, and try to get a job in business or computer science. That doesn't work because major is too different even if you go to Ivy League or Harvard. It's much better if you wanted to get a software engineering job, if you go to SFU, UBC, or University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, the major in computer science than going to Princeton and then major in communication to get a job. It's more employable to go to study or major, you know, those engineering or applied science at you know top Canadian university. That's it guys. Hope you understand what I said, you know, what I was trying to convey in this video. If you have more questions, feel free to ask me questions, but do your own research first. And don't trust what people tell you if they don't have you know actual real experience. Don't trust what people don't trust what things you hear you heard from people from, from people who told you know from people from people from people. They might not be true. And there's so many, you know, wrong facts or misunderstandings, misconceptions in Japan. I don't know what you're saying. You know, it's too vague, that's too ambiguous statement. 
it doesn't apply to computer science that much at all. I see so many people, most of people working at Microsoft are not from Ivy or Harvard. Not at all. So make sure to extract right and correct information and then filter out and filter out on useless and incorrect information. That's really important for you. And one of the reasons why I'm creating this video is to provide correct and valid information based on my experience, my knowledge, my skills. And I have, you know, problem solving skills. You know, I can research and if I write information, I'm pretty good at, you know, being resourceful. You need to be too. You need to start training yourself to be resourceful. Find the right information by doing research, finding the right keywords on Google search. And that's kind of stuff that you're going to learn in computer science and software engineering because you're going to be doing you know, problem solving skills every single day. You need to research you know, some problems. So that's what you're going to get good at after studying computer science. I'm pretty good at you know, looking up some stuff and then solving problems on the internet because I studied computer science and doing that every single day. But anyways, so don't trust what people in Japan, especially in Japan, say if they don't have you know, actual real work experience even if people, you know, people say what they heard from friend to friend, it might not be true. And you guys are teenagers, so really, really be careful about what information to trust and believe. Alright? Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.